It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. Even though the endless cycle of elections has shown that these dog and pony shows don't change shit, populations around the world keep coming back for more. So, to get a bit more perspective on why peeps keep falling for the electoral trap, I recently caught up with Scott Crow, an American anarchist from Austin, Texas, and author of Emergency Hearts, Mouth of Dreams. Hey, Scott. How the fuck are you? Man, I'm actually really good. The 2016 election is starting to heat up. So, are you voting for Bernie or Hillary? I'm actually voting for us, the people, because electoral politics is just a bunch of pomp and circumstance. It always has been, and I've been within the system and outside of the system uh, for many decades. And it, it really is just a pageantry that distracts us from the real work and the real problems and, and real solutions that we might come up with uh, for in the United States for at least two years before an election happens. Up here in Canada, electoral politics are a serious fucking problem for radical movements. But elections themselves only last a few weeks. In the United Snakes, you'll spend motherfucking years on picking a new president. What's up with that? Well, because it's just spectacle, right? It's like watching reality TV. It's the Kardashians, it's the Clintons, it's the Bushes. It's like, it's these dynasty things. It's all spectacle, right? And, and I think that we actually try to take it seriously, just like people take it seriously, um, uh, the, the, the Bachelor TV show or, or that stupid show that uh, Trump was on. And I think that it gives us a distraction from really dealing with the things that the fact that we have drones that are killing children and families all around the world, the fact that immigrants are being denied access uh, when, you know, that are fleeing war-torn countries, the fact that the schools are crumbling in this country because it's a spectacle and everybody wants to be a part of it. It's like sports teams where everybody gets to vote on something so their team can win. Blue team, red team. But there's a lot of it in for those who hold power, right? The culture makers, the, the uh, media, the politicos. Lots of peace have been following the elections because of Donald Trump. Are you worried about what a Trump presidency would look like? And why do you think it is that he's been doing so well in the polls? Well, I think that uh, Trump has been doing so well because he has hit a nerve. Um, uh, you know, racism, uh, misogyny, you know, all of these things run undercurrents in the United States all the time. But what he's done is he's just pierced the veil. I think having a black president for eight years, even if he is totally part of the establishment, to many uh, white men uh, in this country, uh, Trump and, and, and Obama represent two polar opposites to them, even if they are most more on the same page than they, re they realize in some ways. I think that he's just really struck a nerve with a lot of people. There's a lot of discontent. And just like in Germany in the 20s and 30s when fascism was rising, he is tapping into something, this anger and resentment of failures of electoral systems, elect uh, failures of, of cultural systems and, and political and economic systems over uh, of many people, not just in, in the United States, but around the world. But he's tapping it in this reactionary way instead of a way of like, how can we solve these problems together? Because he wants to be a dictator. After Syriza pissed in the face of leftists worldwide, siding with the so-called Troika over the clear demands of the peeps in Greece, do you think that those calling for an electoral solution to neoliberal capitalism will have learned their fucking lesson? Yet, lots of the same people have just moved on to supporting Syriza-like parties such as Podemos in Spain and candidates like Jeremy Corbyn in the UK and Bernie Sanders in the US. What the fuck? I don't fault people for that. The, 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 the truth is it's, it's familiar. It's what we are all raised in. It's what we are known. It's like it's indoctrination to a degree. And I don't even like to use that word because I think it's more more cultural. It's in there. And and it's all, and familiarity is the place we need to jump from. When we start talking about ideas of anarchy and cultural and, and liberation and collective liberation, these are abstracts to many people because they don't even know what it is. We have to realize our own power as individuals first, then our regional power and collective power like in our neighborhoods and our communities, and then begin to build from that. But but electoral politics is easy to fall in. In the past, you have talked about how radicals need to focus on building dual power. What exactly do you mean by that? I mean an anarchist interpretation of dual power, which is that we resist on one hand, which we resist exploitation on one hand, which is what we do in radical and anarchist and leftist communities a lot. But at the same time, we must build our own power from below, my individual power, our collective power, our organizational power, and recognize we have it. And we must do these both at the same time. 
So uh, to me, it's irrelevant who gets elected or if there's policing if, or, or police systems and things like that, except in the way that we want to resist them. At the same time, we need to add open spaces. And like the Zapatistas say, we need to open the crack in history to ask what is it that we can do to build our power from below? And I think dual power is a, is a framework to think about that. And so any action that we would engage in should not be taken uh, unless, we, unless it has this framework of resisting and, and building and creating at the same time. Thanks, Scott. And that about does it for this edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. To hear my entire interview with Scott Crow, or for your chance to win a Submedia.tv t-shirt, just visit my fucking website, Stimulator.tv.